In the 12 seasons coming into 2012 that Louisiana College had played since bringing back football, only one team had the opportunity to finish 8-2. That was in 2011 when a disappointing end to the season included a 41-27 loss at Hardin-Simmons, a week after the Wildcats had lost at home to McMurray 49-28. The Hardin-Simmons loss was especially difficult for the simple fact LC did not close well in that game, one of the lingering memories that caused the program to examine its ways and make changes in the offseason. So call it coincidence, irony, poetic justice, in facing the Cowboys to close out 2012, the Wildcats have given the opportunity to erase some bad memories and end a streak of three straight 7-3 seasons. 8-2 would not only be a modern era record for wins, it might also accomplish another dream, first ever trip to the NCAA Division III playoffs. As the week begins with the Sunday coaches meeting, Harden Simmons is the topic, along with their record-setting quarterback, Logan Turner, who had thrown for more than 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns in his last two games. They got a little bit different quarterback than they had two years ago and what they had last year. <laughs> He's good, boys. <laughs> He's good. This week, because you let them know what they're playing for, I don't think we'll have any problems with motivation or just be smart and practice and let's stay healthy. Let's not do anything that's going to put anybody in a where they can get banged up more than we already are. Everybody knows what this week is, so I don't think we need any extra hype at all. We just it's just business, right. work hard, coach hard. We're going to get their A game. They're going to get our eight plus game. We don't have to talk about that. They'll get all the time. Phil has to play Saturday. Phil cannot, cannot not play. If we don't have Phil, we're, it's going to be rough. Meanwhile, at the Unity Council meeting, no one has to be told what this week means. And in a continuing theme of love and respect for one another, Demario Parker, fresh off his record-setting game, is quick to give praise to an unsung hero for his success. Man. That boy, though, keep doing what you're doing, man. As much as I be telling you, get off me and all that stuff, it's working, dog. Talking to you, Ernie. For real. Playing against you every day when you get in the, in the game, things seem easy. Because you be cheap. But. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hey, for, hey, from, hey, from me to you, thank you, bro. For real. All right, here, here's, here's what I, I want to talk about briefly. They're coming here Saturday with no chance of making the playoffs, but with an opportunity to keep you from going. Don't let anything steal that from you, especially on your home turf. Don't let somebody come steal your dream from your house. This is your house. Protect your turf. Protect it. And one thing I want, to, I want to, to warn you about. You need to protect your unity at all costs, seniors. Over at the stretch and stride, a straight tennis ball, the perfect motivator for an impromptu baseball game. If the Wildcats hold any nerves about facing Harden Simmons, they're not showing it this day. The looseness of the LC players showing a day earlier at Mississippi College has grown even more. Hey, 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 he, he ain't missing one. Hey, look, that's the shadow's finest hey, look, over there. I'm the best thing on this side of the Mississippi, man. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Y'all might be the same 
<laughs> PK, the best thing this side of the silk, man. <laughs> hey. You on this side of the silk? That's what? Oh, hey. I guarantee you cross that bridge one time, time to pick a fight, you'll never fight again. I guarantee you that. Hey, my, my little sister in MMA. That's for real. I bet she drop kick you. What you doing that time? Hey. I ain't never hit a gun in my life. Well, I tell you one thing. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Tell that boy, like I said last time, I tie both my hands behind my back and whoop him all kicks. I saw all kicks, roundhouse, everything. <laughs> Suck noise, boy. Yeah, I think I'm walking Texas Rain. <laughs> oh, man. Alley cat strike. <laughs> Family bowling day. You don't get a camera. What are we doing? Oh, oh, wait, wait. Wildcats 2012. Salem Bound. Don't buy a take a picture for me. Hey, my wife actually is in a bowling term right now. This, I'm emotionally supporting her right now. You made a shirt. You want the ball that I told you to wear? Hunter. Uh, you know, you and Jamie. Y'all got to make fun of people. And I can handle that. Because you make fun of me. I don't make fun of you. You're a good man. You are right? The waves were awesome. <laughs> All day, every day. I feel like a champion. Oh, you look at the camera. Uh -huh. Yeah, say it for the camera. <laughs> How's it going? Pop, you got us today. Uh oh, oh. pop me in. That's how you handle stuff around here. LC Cats, baby. Wild thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ty! <laughs> Check this one out. He ain't getting all the way down. <laughs> Go. You can't do a freaking look. Get your chest up. Get deep. Get slow. Get your knee up. Get your knee up. Me up. Get your knee up. Hold up. Get your knee up. Get your knee up. Hand swing. Get your knee up. Hold up, Cody. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Seriously, in the lunge. Knee up. Hey, we go. Hey, he can do a lunge. Oh God! Get him. He got 15 push up. Get your 15. Get your 15. <laughs> hey, you only did three! <laughs> you only did three! Do it right, Brian. Hey, you hey, you gotta wanna be great. You gotta wanna be great. Yeah, I'm a man of my word. I ain't do them all. They got them on camera. They got them on camera. You gotta wait till the documentary come out for that, then. You gonna have to catch me. Catch me next year, coach. What's up with it, big guy? Get your knee up, Brian. Tired. Oh, we always got us coming out here doing all of that. <laughs> it's all good. Some good agility there. Yeah, I guess so. Working for reps in the bank. Father, I thank you for these men. And Lord, I thank you for the unity that we have. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us the opportunity to do this together. I just pray, Lord, you protect our unity because we know that's our strength. 
God, I thank you that this week the joy of the Lord would be our strength. I pray for great focus and I pray for energy. And Lord, I pray that tomorrow we'd move forward with a great week and a great opportunity at hand. Bless these men, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Right, let's go do this. Playoffs it is 357. Go Here we go. Playoffs on three. Get up, three. man. Get it up. Playoffs. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Playoffs. After stretch and stride, one group of LC players hits the weight room. It's the in-season lifting program under the tutelage of Ty Webb. Sponsored to three at 50 percent, all set. Guys, put the two and a half on the heels if you need them. If you have a problem, your toes rolling. And while the work they're doing here is also serious, it doesn't preclude the group from also having more fun. Keep talking. Keep talking. Don't be hiding behind the camera, man. Where you going? Where you going? My way is No, they got, they got dogs. Hey, check this out. This is going to make top 10. I guarantee you. We have the most athletic dog. Dog. Four legs on earth. Over there. <laughs> you got to run. you never seen a dog play football. Watch on Saturday. Get your guard what he said, people. With their workout complete, the LC defensive players still have one more commitment for the day. Hey, we got feel right now too. Team Meeting with their respective groups of players, co-coordinators Justin Charles and Brian Wallace begin the game plan for Harden Simmons. This is what you guys have been working for, seniors. You've been working for for three and four years. This is what the, all the off season in January, getting up at 5 a.m. The whole summer, staying here this summer, working, working out. This is where it all culminates into, guys. It's Saturday. It's another business week. But it's going to be one hell of a game Saturday, guys. I'm going to tell you what. It's going to be a dog fight. You better leave it all in the field. It's late in the season. I told you it's week 10. If we've been doing what I've been telling you all to been doing for the first nine weeks, you guys should be all right about now. Let's watch this film again. Let's learn from it. Whether it's weights, watching film, or just relaxing with some TV, the football field house is the hub of Louisiana college football. And Cortland Bell gives us a closer look at that facility. How y'all doing today? I'm Cortland Bell, a senior wide receiver here at Louisiana College. And I just want to give you guys a brief tour of our facilities and just a typical day over here at um, LC football. And this is the weight room. This is where a lot of hard work happens, a lot of games are won and a lot of games are lost in here. And um, we look up here, we have our slogans from year to year that we go by and um, it stops in 2009, I'm not sure if they're going to get the other ones. But um, then up here we have the, the, rec the records that's been set here at um, 
at Louisiana College, these are physical records with the squat, bench, clean, incline, and things of that nature. And if we could zoom in here, it's part of our workout plan that we do. Um, some is for the prep program, and then some is for um, the people who are playing right now. But a lot of hard work and sweat has happened right here in um, this locker room, or this weight room. And uh, this is a program builder. We have a great strength coach, Ty Webb, who's going in the right direction. Um, of teaching us and giving us proper techniques on how to become bigger, stronger, and faster. And it's just another phase to this football team that you guys don't get to see as much. And now we'll go into the locker rooms. This part here is the junior, senior locker rooms. Um, just mainly the upperclassmen are over here and we have another locker room across the way for all the younger guys but uh this is where the nucleus of the team comes and we basically live together in this area this is the receivers and quarterbacks area here and dbs are down there and uh it's cool to be with your brothers and united doing stuff like this i mean it's moments that we all cherish just to sit in here and have conversations clown around joke fight whatever we do and it's my locker right here kind of junky i'm all over the place but i spent a lot of time in there too so Oh, this is the Players' Lounge. Y'all just made it to the documentary, guys. Y'all didn't even know it. This is the Players' Lounge. Uh, you can see what goes on over here. First take, people eating. And it's Mario Park. Yeah, we on Chris. <laughs> we on Chris. Look, this Ryan, that's Ryan Montague right there. Hey, and this is the guy here that keeps us clean. He, hey, he take care of us over here. He keep us straightened up. But um, I don't know, it's just a place where you can come and hang out at any time during the day. It's always open, always available to us, and you can see people like to chill out in here, so. What's up, man? Y'all in my spot, bro. What's up with that? I guess we can go up, uh, go upstairs now and check out the coach's office and um, secretary's office and and see where the real work behind the scenes is being done. A bunch of film study and coaches basically working around the clock. Louisiana College Football. And this here is our secretary's office here. A bunch of planning and information goes into things of that nature. And this picture right here is unique. It's the first touchdown that was going around New Field. I was actually a freshman that year and I got to witness that, so it was pretty cool. And. Um, it's just a bunch of pictures and stuff they have over here, just the history, the brief history of Louisiana College football. So, jerseys, I'm guessing was the first jerseys we had when it came back in 2000. And this one here is an old jersey when we played 30, 30 something years ago. Pretty cool they still have that in the long sleeve deal. It's like a sweater. I don't see how shoulder pads went under it, but it's pretty cool. And it's the first time running out on a new field. I like that picture. I don't know if I can see myself somewhere in there, but that's a pretty cool picture. And this here is Coach Matchett's office. This is the receiver coach. He in here working hard. <laughs> He's in here working hard advising people. <laughs> we're doing a little tour. We're doing a little tour of the uh, the facility over here. You got the best guy in town. <laughs> Y'all need, need to put that camera in front of the booth and let him, let him give his story. Yeah. He'll be changing some lives. Yeah, I hope so. Money, get downstairs. What's up? JC, you can talk on a documentary. This is our DB coach, co-defensive coordinator, and this is his office right here. How y'all doing? <laughs> coach Wallace, see, I tell you, coaches are always work. They always up to something. Something that's getting us better. It's just a little, a little documentary just going through the facilities. Cool. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> cool deal. Let's go. A couple coaches' office. Uh, this is Coach Morris' office. 
He's working. Coach, what you planning? Our itinerary? Are you planning our itinerary right now? Oh, you, oh, you already got that taken care of. I'm working on the schedule for next year. Okay, really? Yeah. <laughs> You're always a step ahead of the game. Hey, Al, I'm glad to see you. I got something to show you. You're always a step of the game ahead, Coach Mo. You're always a step ahead. <laughs> That's my man, man. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I need some old newspaper clipping. I guess when we can't. The return of LC. Some more old clippings. I sat there and read them, I don't know how many times, just to, just to kind of get the gist of the people that plowed the ground for us to have what we have today. Some of the people who first took the oath of playing here, which is, which is a big task to take up on. Something very special. And this is Coach Richard's offensive line coach. His door is always closed and it's always locked. And he has his headphones in. I'm not sure what he's doing all the time, but he's always in front of that computer. Doing, <laughs> I'm guessing he's breaking down film, but every time I come up here, that's what he's doing. Another coach is Coach Batson. This is another um, the assistant defensive coach's office. Bunch of film study goes on here. You can see they got all this technical stuff all hooked up everywhere, but. That's like another drawing board for us. And then we'll go into the, the head man's office. And it's done. And he's in here coaching them up. <laughs> you gonna be in the slap? <laughs> That's it. We're doing a little deal, a lot of 20 personnel. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> We're just doing a little brief documentary. Coach is just going to go. It's stuff we, we already do, yeah. but it's just playing fast with the same personnel, not changing personnel. Okay. Oh, I almost got about the SID, Jordan Myers, and this is his office. This guy handles all our stats and things of that nature. What's up, guys? Getting us known nationally. He's the man behind all that, so we appreciate him a lot. And um, what do you mean to this program? And this over here is um, some of the football players' dorms. It's called Church Hall. It used to be a church and they turned it to a dormitory, but a bunch of the football players stay in these dorms over here. This is another phase of it. This is the um, freshman and sophomore locker room. Enter at your own risk. You never know what's in here or what's not in here. But this is where a bunch of young guys probably do a bunch of clowning around in here, I can imagine, because we have a group of characters for younger guys, and they always keep me laughing, so I'm pretty sure that's what goes on behind these walls. Then we go walk a little bit further back here. We have more locker rooms. This is actually my first time being back here with the new locker rooms and stuff. So this is just a little dose of where our underclassmen chill out at. We can go outside the other way and go around to study hall. And this is also a part of a church hall. More football players stay this way, and a bunch of our equipment and stuff come from this area. This is our equipment room, which is probably locked because they have some valuable things that people love to get their hands on in there. And uh, over here, we have just different storage rooms, shoulder pads. And this is the study hall. I'm trying to see if anybody in here. Yeah, we have a couple. Well, one person in study hall right now. They all in there? I guess we can walk in with him and check it out. That's Brandon Allen. He acting like he's studying. He probably ain't. He, oh, he's finally trying to finish the Drew Brees book. He's finally trying to finish. Coach Ty, how you doing? Very much. Oh, yeah, it's, only, it's not that many people here right now. How long is it going to be open today? This is Ty Webb, our strength coach, the guy I was telling y'all about earlier. We're just taking a little tour around the facilities. 
when we was in your weight room, and I told him a little bit about the program. <laughs> you own that thing, though. No. There's a bunch of computers and things. Um, they try to give us access so we can become, I mean, solid students also. I mean, we're athletes, but um, our coaching staff stressed us being students first, and this is one of the things that really has been beneficial to our program, um, something that we always hasn't had, but we have it now, and I think it is helping us out in a positive way. So. I wish, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not at all. Brandon, that's your bookmark you're telling us about? That's yeah, the cool deal. Get on Kagan and Cockboy. Yeah. Cool deal. All right, we'll talk to y'all later. That's um, shoulder pads, extra ones. I think they're trying to get rid of all the old equipment and get us new stuff, so that'd be nice. Game of football is changing, so that means equipment and everything else has to change also. I just want to thank you guys for coming out and just sharing this brief tour of um, Louisiana College football facilities. And I'm Cortland Bell, and once again, go Wildcats. With November comes changes in temperature and daylight. And as the LC Wildcats take their preparation for Harden Simmons to the practice field, both of those realities are now apparent. How you feeling? Good. Yeah. The newborn baby. The better. Why the old crab? You gonna see? <laughs> you got your shot on? You know. You see they laughing? Yeah, go ahead and give me another. Right. Another? You get your shot on now. You like that? Right. You laughing too? Get back, back, get back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> it's our preparation for, you know, Saturday, you feel me? <laughs> Ooh, that's what I have to you. Oh, that's what I have to you, dog. That's what I have to you. Hey, let's go! Why you think it's all good? Job one. Keep on, keep on. Keep on. This week's gonna go by quick, man. Saturday's gonna be here before you know it. Lucy, pray for us today. Um, dear, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you right now, Lord. Just thank you again just for the opportunity to play this game that you have blessed us with, Lord God. And um, as we go into this week of preparation, I just pray that you be with us mentally, physically, and spiritually, Father God, that we may see you in a way that we have never before, Lord. And um, that we will glorify you through the talents that you have blessed us with, Lord. And um, I just pray that you be with this Wildcats team, Father God. And, that's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Playoffs on three. Get it up in here and believe. Let's go. Playoffs. Here we go. One, two, three. Playoffs. With the final week of the regular season, normally comes a sense that everything being done is being done for the last time. Last Wednesday. But with an opportunity to extend their season, the Wildcats seem to be thinking otherwise. Hey, what's up, camera? I ain't seen y'all all day. You little late, ain't you? Just in time. Just in time. I don't even want to talk to the camera today. Yeah, BK. Mm-hmm. They disappointed me. Mm-mm. Hey, man, I told you I'm not talking to the camera Yeah, today. Nate. I'm disappointed. Everybody. <laughs> Country lay down? Yes. No, not the country. Oh, okay. The country did just fine. Oh, I got you. Oh. You need to look weird or just looking away from the camera. Because I'm not talking. Because I don't want to talk to the camera. Talk to you. you leave me alone. Man, the you get out of my business. Man, the camera too. <laughs> yeah. Talk to the camera's a part of this. Huh? Come on, camera man. Too real for TV. <laughs> Too real for TV. Come on, camera man. Get him. So the selection show, huh? Yeah, uh, Sunday, Sunday, five o'clock. So to get together. I mean, if y'all wanted to, you know, what I'm saying to have them all in the same room or whatever. Oh, they were saying they wanted a video or something. Oh, well, that's that's for us to send to them so they could have something. Oh, cool. Whenever they show us on there, like Louisiana College facing whoever Huntsville. You tell them if we're guaranteed a playoff spot, get them together. We'll do whatever they want to do. If we win, 
I think you've got 75, 80 percent chance, somewhere around there. Everything that the D3Football.com has said on their website and on Twitter and everything, they've got a pretty good chance we win. Because I mean, they're number, they had the regional rankings today. We're still number seven. Part seven is number ten, so that's gonna be a big win. If, you, if we beat them, that gives us a win against an, a regionally ranked opponent. Yeah. And your, so, your only two losses are against number one and two in the region. So, because Wesley's in our region somehow, I don't know, but somehow they are. So, the two losses against two top five teams, number one and two teams in the region, and they win against number ten. It'll be all right. Thursday brings with it a routine players might not miss all that much. Earlier in the year, 515 practice meant the chance to avoid the heat of the day. In November, it's playing in the cold of the yeah, morning. It's all right, though. It's all right. We don't worry about it. I'm hurting. I'm helping well, the brother in the out. Kicker position. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> high point, high point, high point. Bottom of the numbers block. I'm going to let y'all know it's going to be cold in Salem. It's a walk in the park right now. Hey. The jury's still out on number 10 if he's ready for a big game. <laughs> he's still out. Hey, I plan on answering the jury's question this Saturday, though. We all do. He's going to have the jury scratching their head. It's like we'll be out here next Thursday, baby. It ain't cold. It look like it, but it ain't cold. Uh. Hey, Jamie, that's the best ball you threw off. Do it. Hey, I'm glad it's this late, though, baby. <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go. Hey, come here, please. I'm saying, hey, come off the football. Whatever stance you got, running backs, use running back stance by me. Hey. The transition of the morning darkness good, 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 to morning good, good, light good, good, good. seems almost the perfect analogy for this football season. What started in hopes and dreams, but no certainties, has now come into full light. Hurry! I trip right to you. It's too early in the morning. It's too cold for all that. And then you ask him what he hollered for, he probably can't even tell you. The final full practice of the regular season is done, and now it is time for the Wildcats to celebrate their seniors before their final game at Wildcat Stadium. That process begins with what is also an annual tradition. It's called Senior Steak Night. For the coaches and seniors only, a way for this core group to spend one final time just together. Now I can say with without any hesitation that you guys have been the best leaders I've been associated with at Louisiana College as a whole. We've had, we've had individual leaders along the way that have led, but this group has led as a, as a whole, as a whole class, better than any group that I've ever been around. I, I'm just proud of you, and I just wanted Dr. Payne to say a few things as well to you guys. First and foremost, I want to tell you guys how proud I am of uh, watching y'all this year, man. I've uh, seen y'all grow up. Some of you guys I got here last year, and I've actually watched you for a whole year now and watched you go through things on the sidelines. And Man, I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. And it, it ain't based on nothing else. It's just based on where y'all where at right now. And it, this is the time now. This is, this is when it's going to happen. It's scary to me what y'all y'all can do this year, man. This is this is a really really good group. With the speeches done, it's time for the players to enjoy what they really came for—the chance to eat some steak. You got one now. Some hot melon. Gracias. Thank you, Lord. Mushrooms. One only steak. Thank God. B is good. Don't put much on them. You want a cold milk? Give me a juice. We're looking for that bottle. Who's behind you? Yeah, cold milk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can't even wait. It's too good. I'm going on top of steak. As a matter of fact, you're going right on top. <laughs> no, I, I got to get some room. I can't be up on everybody while I'm eating. You got to have some room. See how big this is? You got to have some room for this. You didn't get to a play while you recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
With kickoff less than 24 hours away, the final big event of the senior week for the entire team is the evening known as Senior Speeches. Each senior, in this case all 25 of them, is given the chance to address the team and say anything he wants. It's a special night, a time to reflect on memories, but also to give a charge to those coming behind. Been a lot of young men that have gone before them. 12 seasons worth. A lot of them have, have uh, plowed some pretty hard ground from the beginning. And some guys that sacrificed a lot so that you could have what you have today and be able to be in the place that you are going into tomorrow as the first ever Louisiana College football team to be played for a playoff spot. I just want to tell you how proud I am of you and how excited I am about um, what's to come. And that's what we're here for. And I want you to respect this time. I want you to honor it because at some point you're going to be standing here. What do you say when your time is coming near except to play every game with no fear? You never know which play will be your last, so make sure that you do it fast. What fun it's been to play here with you, a true honor given to very few. We've been molded into soldiers for the glory of God. So tomorrow when we win, make sure you look up and nod. Because he is proud of the men we have become, which is more important than any outcome. Just make sure y'all leave everything on the field because you never know when God takes, uh, takes you for something else, like for another journey ahead in life. So just want to make sure y'all go out tomorrow and beat them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, when, when I was thinking, like, what am I going to say to everybody? Only thing that kept coming to my head, you know, Coach Charlie used to be a strength and conditioning coach. Everything used to tell us in the rate room, you know, leave it like you find, uh, leave it better than you find. We've been here for what, four years now, and we've been 73. We've been consistent, but let's be better than consistency. Let's just come out here tomorrow, leave it better than we find it, man. Let's, let's shock the world. Let's go. We got to win eight. Let's get in the playoff and do what we got to do. I mean, make this a fun game. Don't, don't beat yourself up over everything you do, because, I mean, Football can get the best of you if you let it. And if you ain't having fun out there, I mean, there's there's really no point in playing because I mean, it's just, it's just a, I mean, it's a, it's a fun game. <laughs> Looking at Wayne, just I mean, he he makes it fun for a lot of us, and he makes it aggravating for a lot of us too. But make an impact on that person sitting next to you, or or who's in the huddle next to you, or who, who's down on the field next to you, catching that ball, scoring that touchdown pass. Celebrate a little bit, you know, have fun. When I first got here, me, uh, Jeremy, and Darren. We were joking in a room freshman year and an old tutor and he said, well, if you quit, I quit. And we've been, we've been joking about that ever since then because ain't none of us quit yet. You know, we just, we formed that group and there's, and it, it, those two guys have really, you know, they carried me through this thing. And I just want to say thank y'all, you know, because y'all, we stuck together and it's just been, it's been amazing, dude. Use, use these coaches in this community to make y'all a better person and a better man, you know, because at the end of the day, it ain't going to matter, you know, whether you won this game or won that. What's going to matter is your bond with your friends and uh, your brothers and stuff like that. So that's really all I got to say. Let's go win tomorrow, though. It was a rough two years. I lost my mom in 2011 and my um, big brother in 2012 or this year. And y'all was the reason I, I didn't stop my life. Like, you know, I felt like I was going to let all y'all down. And that's the reason I kept pushing. Man, to the young guys, man, just stick with it, bro. Like, it's worth it. Hey, Corisa, appreciate you uh, just sticking in there with me, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I know, hey, I know I'll be aggravating you. I do it on purpose sometimes. Nico <laughs> <laughs> Dunn, you know it. <laughs> you know what I'm hey, hold it down, Coach Mocha. When I dip, man, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> yeah, I ain't got to hold up. I lost my grandma this year too. And that was probably the closest person I, I had in my life. And being here kept me, you know what I'm saying, sane, because I've been out there, for real. And I just appreciate all the coaches for keeping me here. Appreciate all the coaches for giving me a chance and an opportunity. All y'all players, man, y'all keep grinding, because y'all time gonna come. Even if you ain't playing right now, your time gonna come. When it comes, you just gotta shine. So when we play tomorrow, man, if anybody go down, anything happen, you be ready because your number might get called. So I just want to say thank y'all. We'll go out there and whoop them boys tomorrow. 
Let's get this thing over with. Let's celebrate. This came so fast, cause I remember Ty over there. We used to call him Ty crazy. He over there crying and stuff. Our freshman year, me and my real, I always talk about that. Ty over there boo booing and crying and stuff. <laughs> man, man, man. But man, this tomorrow, man, come out here, man, play hard, man, for we can win this thing, man. Don't be all uptight, none of this stuff. Everybody just go out there and ball, man. But we finish wrong, man. I'm really, really kind of scared to see where y'all gonna be in four years. Cause I mean, Coach Dunn sold a dream to me. He said we were gonna have a big stadium and all that. <laughs> By our sophomore, he said we were gonna have a new field house and all that. It's not happening. <laughs> it's, I'll be real with y'all, it's not happening. But, uh, <laughs> as long as you keep the faith and you keep striving forward, I'm all about progress, so you keep progressing it, man. You can't go wrong in life, so that's all I ask. I just wanna thank y'all, man. Uh, it's been a great five years. and. Uh, I just want to go out here and get this win tomorrow and make it a playoffs <coughs> and uh, make our run, you know. That's all I got. You know, when you get out there tomorrow, man, you just you don't matter what position you play, you play it to the best of your ability, man. And when you out there on that field playing, you just know you ain't playing for yourself no more, you playing for your brother, man. And your brother's going to play for you. Do that, man. Everything's fall in place and get this done. <laughs> to the seniors, uh, it's been a long ride, but I ain't ready for it to be over with yet. I want about five more weeks after this week to, uh, you know, to further more our legacy here. And uh, for the young guys, just stick it out, man. Uh, you know, everybody talks about how much they miss home and everything. But at the end of the day, uh, I don't really talk to anybody back home. And the, these are my, this is my family, and these are my friends. And, uh, you know, that's who you're gonna know for the rest of your life. You know, you, you, know, you go back home and you're like, well, how's so and so doing? Well, you ain't doing much, really. You know, these guys are gonna carry you through the rest of your life, and uh, I just stick it out and uh, try to make it through the off season. It's kind of like life, you know. You're on, you know, kind of borrow, borrow time. You know, that number that you're wearing, you know, you know, those pads that you're wearing, the helmet you're wearing. You know, you know, it's it's not yours. You know, it's it's the programs. You know, you know, equipment. You know, you call it that, and uh, you on borrowed time. So, you know, just make everything that you can out of that time that you're here, you know, make, make memories, you know, you know, things that you can remember, you know, for the rest of your life, you know, which correlates to, to your rest of your life, you know, just keep making memories, you know, appreciate the time that you got here, because, you know, it's, it's short. It's time now, man. We are a great team. Y'all hear Coach said we are a great team all the time, but great just ain't good enough. It's time for us to be the greatest. That's a big, that's a big transition from being great and being the greatest. So now it's time for us to be greatest. Tomorrow we go out there. Now I know what's, what we gotta do. To all the seniors, Dr. Payne told us something yesterday about leadership. Leadership ain't just uh, people that lead. It's getting a whole bunch of people to believe in the same thing we believe in. Coach got us to believe, they believe. Let's do it. I'll be the first to tell you, I never thought I'd graduate from here. I, I always said, man, we'll play this season and I'll be out. You know, just you know, just play the season and I'm done. But uh, you know, if you buy into their to their studies, man, you you'll get a degree from there and go be something with your life. So, you know, not only athletics but uh the studies. So thank you. I had a lot of struggles in my life. Um, like Pop and uh, Wayne, I lost somebody real close to me, my mom. And uh, ever since then, just haven't been right. So um, and I got a phone call, made a phone call to a coach back home and. Uh, 30 minutes later, Coach Dunn called me and uh, asked me to play football here. So that was a true blessing in disguise because I didn't know when I have an opportunity to play football again. So that was, thank you, Coach, for that. Appreciate you. Just buy into this. It's a slow grind, but when you're, you're in one of our shoes, it goes by so fast, man. You, don't, you ain't going to want it to end either. I love you guys, man. For real. Be a part of this, just be a part of this team. It's an honor, man. Walk around with your chest poked out saying, I'm a wildcat, man. Just be a wildcat, man. I've been in dark moments, real dark moments in my life. When I got here, you know, it's, it's like, you know, God showed me a light. Got closer to him and things started changing. I became a man, you know. They say, you, they say when, you, when you reach 18, you want to be a man, but you're not. You know, it's the experiences and the, and, the, and the lessons you learn. 
along the way that makes you the man. The word fear. You can look at it in two different ways. And Johnny, you showed me this. You can look at it in two different ways. You can fear everything and rock, fear everything and run. Or you can face everything and rise. And that's the main thing these coaches tell y'all every day. The main thing they tell y'all is to face everything they put y'all through and rise through it all. It was Coach Don and Coach Matchup that just showed me the way to use my struggle as a way to, 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 to teach, as a way to lead, you know what I mean? Because I'm pretty sure they both they both been through some things that at times they want to quit or they want to give up. Just as well as they know I have, you know what I mean? And for them to tell me they love when I first got here, I didn't really understand the true meaning of it. But as as time as time went on, as time ticked on, they really showed me the true meaning of love, you know what I mean? Because I ain't never had a male figure in my life. And I know there's plenty of people in here that have, there's plenty of people that have. But just from my own perspective, I've never had a male figure in my life. Like Rick said, that was consistent. I never had that until I got here. So Coach Don, I just thank you for what you told me when I first got here, you know what I mean? <laughs> Coach Don told me when I first got here, let me be your daddy. I ain't really understand the meaning of that, but now I do. And I love you, and I thank you. And Coach Max, you already know one thing. I kill for you, and I mean that, literally. And I feel like God showed himself to us three times this season. He showed us at Wesley, this is how close you can get. This is what you could be if you are honor me. He showed us at Merrill Hunt Bailey. You don't want to honor me, this is what you get. He showed us at TLU. Thanks for giving me the gratitude. Thanks for giving me the glory. I'm going to reward you. So let's finish this season out just honoring God, man. Keeping him first in all we do. Continue to give him the glory. And watch what happens, man. I got this little gift that I'm going to get to all you guys here tonight. It's just something very small, very simple, but when someone gave me one, there was no way that I could not give it to you guys. And um, I'll pass this bag around for every one of y'all to have, but it's a penny, and it has a cross shape in it. Y'all will get one in a second. I want y'all to really try this out, but if you look at it from a distance and you try to focus through the cross, you can't really get the whole picture of anything. And that was me because I was far away from Christ when I first got here. I couldn't see the end for nothing. I couldn't see what was in state for me. I would have walked away from something that's very special. I tried to leave LC three times. And every single time something crazy happened. I tried to get away one time and my GPA was too low. I get to the other school where you can't get your financial aid. Come back to LC, can I give you my financial aid? I mean, it just happened. And after the third time, I was like, I'm just gonna buy into what, it's, what the plan is over here. But I, in a way, I still was looking at this cross from a distance. Me and God went on the right course. And I can only see half for the picture. I can only see half for the picture. But I'm telling you guys, when you get this penny tried out, when you get closer, this, cr this cross starts to expand. And when you put it up to your eye, you can see the whole picture very clear. And that's how life is sometimes. You see it from a different lens. You see it from yours. But the closer you are to Christ, that's when you're going to get a real, genuine image of what's going on. And I'm looking through this, and I see you guys. And when I see you guys, I see love. That's all I see. And when I all fall, when everything falls down, when all of this crashes and burn, only one thing going to remain, and that's love. That's what's going to remain. One day we won't be as athletic. One day Wildcats won't be here. One day all this is going to be gone. But that one thing will, most important of all, will remain, and that's love. And that's all I can think about when I'm sitting up here standing in front of you guys. I love each and every one of y'all genuinely, man. I pray for y'all as much as I can, bro. It's something real. It's something special. And we got, we got a testimony. 
We have a test. And you really find out who you are when your back's against the wall. Emotions are going to be flaring. Tempers are going to be rising. But at the end of the day, it's going to boil down to a game that we all been playing since we were kids. X's and O's. Execution. That's what it's going to boil down to. Who can execute the best? Not about who the biggest, who the loudest, or who the strongest. I just ask you guys to just have that focus, man, that pinpoint focus. Just want to encourage you guys, if you don't know Christ, humble yourselves. That's what he taught me how to do. One of the big things through this is just to humble yourself. Because if you can save yourself, you would have did it a long, long time ago. He created us all with a void. Everybody in here has a void. And the only thing that can fill it is him. True true statement, man. Y'all can tweet that later. True statement. For real. And I just wanna, I, I just gotta close with that, man. We got Harden Simmons coming in tomorrow. God has a sense of humor. He drew it up like this for us. Everybody said, well, I always gotta make stuff complicated. <laughs> Why we can't just do it? God had a plan for it all. And this is how he drew it up for us. We make it complicated, but it's all so simple. It's all so simple. God is standing like this, guys, with his arms wide open. But we're the ones running from him. And that's what I'll end with. Him. I come to you right now, Lord, um, just as, as humble as possible, Father God. Just thanking you again for the, the journey for Louisiana College football team. I just pray that you continue to move, Lord, like I know you will, Lord. Uh, we all were guilty, Father God. We all deserve death, Lord, but you satisfied your own wrath by sending your own son, Father God, and that's the ultimate image of love, Lord. And um, as our hearts are open and our ears are open right now, Father God, I just, just pray that everyone in here can embrace the love that you have for us, Father God. I know that you are jealous for every single soul in this building, Lord, and just, just move in a godly way. Just show them how mighty you are, Father God. There's no way that we can resist it as men, Father. And I just thank you for it again. And I just pray that you be with us tomorrow as we take that field. Um, and we will be careful, Lord. Win, lose, or draw to give you all the glory, Lord. I know that your will will be done. And I thank you for it. And that's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. As morning arrives in Pineville, Louisiana College's final home game of the 2012 season intersects with another campus tradition. It's called Mom's Weekend, a bonding experience for mothers and daughters that also always includes the toilet papering of the women's dorm, Cottingham Hall. Inside the school cafeteria, the players pre-game meal, this time with the parents of the seniors invited as well. And as part of their morning devotional, the Wildcats hear from former wide receiver Matt Albrecht. If I could go back and literally get a full ride anywhere, name the place, I, I'd be like, get, get out of here. LSU, you joke, I'd laugh them off. LC is where I'm proud to be from. You know what I'm saying? LC is where I'm proud to be from. And you're gonna go into life, Mara, you said, go into the next chapter of your life, you're freaking from LC, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're a Wildcat. You're a Wildcat. Be proud. I'm serious. Be proud. And then from their senior spiritual leader, Cortland Bell. To my teammates, remember, Matt said it, focus. Pinpoint focus. Emotions going to be flaring, I'm telling you. Going to be wanting to come out of that helmet and probably get really physical with them boys. But the first team to settle down and focus on the execution will win this game today. So let's pad up and let's do it. Um, go Wildcats. Thank y'all. Hey, Phil, you some trash. You can't catch. Over at the football field house, another tradition. This one only for the senior defensive players. The handing out of the White Shirt Pride Awards. The speaker, Coach Justin Charles, who shares with those he now considers his brothers, his own struggles in life, and what this day means to him. Every single morning I wake up, man. I wake up every single day, and I say my prayers. All right? And my Bible's with me everywhere I go. 
all right? And this cloth is always in my Bible, all right? The first four years we were in orange church, so this is always with me. And I say my prayers, and, and, I, and I see this every single day. See it every single day. Coach Morris is the one that hands it. And I thank God for life, first and foremost. Thank you for life, and I thank you for my family and my friends. All right? And I'm getting emotional right now, because I, I, I thank him every single day, mainly because of you guys. All right? You guys are my family. You guys are my friends. I don't have, I have, I have a great family. I really do. But there's always been something going on in my family. And Reggie said it best last night, man. He, he spoke exactly what I was going to speak about today. It's consistency. The only thing I know that's going to go right for me every single day is I get to come up here and see the smiles on you guys' face. Pop, if Pop ain't smiling, something's wrong, man. I got to crack a joke for my man. You guys are why I wake up every single day, and I thank the Lord, because I get to see you guys. My brothers. My brothers. Y'all are my brothers, man. I'll do anything for you. I had everything going for me, man. Everything going for me. My senior year, I made a mistake. Got kicked out of school. Got kicked out of school, made a mistake. A lot of you guys know that. That's not something I'm afraid to hide. Not something I'm afraid to hide. I made a mistake, and I accept my mistake. I took it on the chin. It hurt. But the thing that hurt me the most is those guys up there on that board. I let them down for their senior year. That's what hurt me the most. Okay? Because that was my family. That is my family. They, those guys still, I talk to all of them. But let me tell you this. Like I was saying, everything was going good. That, that point hit my life. And I, I had struggles. It was a tough year for me, man. I got kicked out of school. I'm, you know, I, I'm this big time football player, which I thought I was anyways. But I'm this big time football player. I got kicked out of school. What, what's next? What's next? Okay. I had the opportunity to quit or keep moving. And there was a lot of times that I decided that I wanted to keep moving, but going in a different direction and not play football anymore. Especially those first two months, man, because I was just so hurt. Just so hurt that the thing that I loved the most was taken away from me. All right, it was taken away from me. And then, about after a month, I get these phone calls, man, every single day with somebody else. It was Coach Morris, Coach Secord, Coach Buck, Coach Corky Howe, Coach DeSoto, Jeremy DeSoto, one of my best friends. Coach Maxie was right there with me. I've had my, that was my family, guys. Those guys pulled me through. My life about two years ago hit me in the face again. Hit me in the face. My marriage started going downhill. I didn't show it to anybody, but for two years, I was struggling, man. I was struggling and it was hurting me. It was just killing me on the inside. And then this past December, you know, a lot of you guys know that, that we're on the team this spring. Life hit me in the face again. You know, me and my wife get divorced. I didn't want it to happen, but I needed it to happen, to be honest with you. You know, looking back at it, I needed it to happen because I wasn't happy. I wasn't with my family. I wasn't with my friends, okay? When you're in those times, man, you need somebody to pull you through, right? All right, and, I, I, and the first thing that, that happened was, was Coach Matchett and Coach Dunn. You know, I just remember that next morning after the whole situation happened, you know, we sat down over at the River Outreach Center, man, and it was, it was God given. I knew where I had to, I knew where I had to go. All right, I knew where I had to turn. My life was in a shamble. Coach Buck's gone. Coach Dunn is saying, okay, you're the defensive coordinator. What do we need to do? Well, hell, you got, we got, we got to win, right? You know, that's what I'm thinking. But I'm in shambles. All right. And I needed somebody to pull me through. And so I prayed every single day. All right, I prayed, prayed every single day. And then Coach Dunn kept asking me, what do we need to do? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? And I said, but look, we, we, we just got to get the right people in. And he, he just, he, he kept saying, he kept asking me, what do we need to do? And, and I'm trying to find myself as an individual this whole December and, and through January. I'm trying to find myself. Okay, and I'm speaking to you guys. But 
As I'm trying to find myself, I'm continuing to read my Bible like I, was like I started off, guys, I'm telling you. And I saw that someone's shirt and in my wallet, which I got on me right now, I got my white shirt in there. And Coach Dunn came, you know, we were in the office speaking one day, and he said, what, you know, and it's just, this guy gave me these words. He, he said, Coach Dunn said, what do we need to do? I said, Coach, well, we don't need to go from the outside. We need to stay on the inside. And so therefore, to me, it was white shirts, right? It was white shirts. If we're gonna do this defensive thing, we're gonna do a white shirt. We're gonna keep it together, right? Because we're family. Like, like I've been talking about this whole time, we're family, all right? I was struggling. I was struggling in life. And I needed the people that I trusted most to be by my side. He said, what do we need to do? I said, well, coach, I can't do it alone. I don't want to even try. I said, we need to make sure Coach Batson's with me because I'm struggling. I told him I was struggling. I told Coach Dunn I was struggling. I said, we need to keep Coach Batson. We need to keep every coach on this staff to make sure that things are right, okay? To make sure that things are right, to keep you guys together. That's what we need to do, all right? And, I, and, and he kept asking me, well, well, we still have a spot open. I said, well, the only person that even came to mind, you can ask Coach Matthew, the only name that came to my mind was Brian Wallace, okay? Because he's my, he, he, you, you guys know, that guy slept on my couch for like three summers in a row. He slept on my couch for three summers in a row when I was in college, and that's my brother, man. We've been through a lot together, all right? We got a lot of funny stories and all that stuff, but that's my brother, man. He helped pull me through. Every single one of these coaches helped pull me through, all right? And that's the tie that binds us together, guys. It's, it's family, all right? We all have struggles. All right, and I just wanted to throw some of my struggles out there on the table to you guys. So you, because sometimes I'm not transparent with you guys. And that's my fault. I'm so hard shelled on the outside sometimes. But as white shirts, man, we have this tie that binds us together. Mine is orange, mine is white. Orange and white, it's all together right now. It's all intertwined, okay, it's all intertwined. You seniors, this is, this is y'all's legacy right now. We've been talking about it. What have you guys left? What have you guys put on the table? What is this place for you? What this place means to me is the same thing I said at the start. I wake up every single morning giving praises to God because I get to wake up and see you guys. Because y'all are my family. Y'all are my friends, man. And that's the tie that binds us together. You know, it's, it's the last White Shirt Pride meeting of the year. We pass out the cloth, okay? And what we ask you guys to do is, is to put the cloth in your thigh board. All right, you put it in your right thigh board and you slide it in there. And don't forget it at the end of the game, because I almost did that. Put it in that thigh board, and, that, and you're playing for your white shirt pride brothers, okay? If you're on the field with a senior, and you're tired, you look at that senior and say, I ain't tired, and pat your thigh board, but don't call blue. Dean. me. Yes. Ravilla, Ford, appreciate it. Weatherford. Guys, y'all can open those letters whenever you want. Okay. It's something spoken from the heart from every single one of us coaches. But we're, this is how it binds us together now, Nate. Phil, Reggie, Pop, PK, Juarez, Rich. All you guys, man. It's the tie that binds us together, Marcus. Even all the way in Finland, baby. It hit me the day we got out of cloth. Like, I got real emotional because I, I didn't expect to get like that. But Reggie, when I, Reggie got up and spoke, that just really just touched me. Seniors, you got anything? I'm going to give my all, man. Because it's about to end. My last home game, man, at LC. I watched a lot of guys get this white shirt, man. And I got one now. And it's real that it's about to be over with. Last night I ain't crying, man, but man, can't hold it anymore, man. That's it. That's that's win, man. Let's get a shout out today. Give you all, man. Let's get a shout out for real. By any means. Shut them out. 
and white shirt, man. For all y'all, all y'all young guys, this means more to me than, than a lot of y'all know, bro. I really don't even want to open it. Face the reality that it's for real, it's always done. <laughs> Go on, man. Get it up. Go. The tie that binds is true. You know, I, I know all these guys, I'm going to be able to contact and call and just check on them, see how they're doing. I know that it's always going to be something positive because the things that we went through as a group, as a unit, is going to keep us focused and strong throughout our lives and being great dads and husbands and just people in our communities. Y'all know what time of day it is, baby. It's white shirt day, baby. It's white shirt day, baby. White shirts on three! One, two, three! White shirts! Guys, last home game, man. Last home game. Big time players make big time plays in big time games. Bottom line. Mike got 70 snaps today total. Average play is about seven seconds. It's about 490 seconds total. It's about eight minutes. Can you give each other eight minutes for the rest of your life? Eight minutes of playing your hearts out. Eight minutes for the rest of your life to lay it on the line. You guys are champions. You guys are champions. Let's go have a good one today, guys. fight. I just want you to know, I got my penny. And I got it right here. I got it right here. Laser. Laser. Thank you for battle. Thank you for war that you teach us as men how to war. God, I thank you that these warriors are more than conquerors through you. Give us a great day in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, two by two, let's roll, man. We all blessed to do it one more time, baby. Let's go. What? On this day that honors the LC seniors, the pregame ceremony has each player running to midfield through a tunnel of underclassmen. <laughs> there to meet with his parents. Yeah, baby. Or in some cases, a good friend. A dog. Yeah, I'm proud of you, baby. Right here. Yeah, there's a dog right here. A special moment none will forget. As game time approaches, another former LC great wide receiver Jordan Rito arrives to cheer his team to victory. 
Look at that baby, she's beautiful. Thank you, Coach. And now, with kickoff just minutes away, a final speech from Coach Dunn. This little saying just came to my mind. There's an old saying that says, if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Yo. Yeah. Let's don't have no ifs and buts, you understand me? Yes, yeah. sir. Let's have a Merry Christmas yeah. without any ifs and buts. Today, it's about the, it's, it's about the focus. Focus through the cross. Keep that penny close to your eye, you understand? Yes, sir. All right, let me pray for you. Father God, bless our worship today. In Jesus' name, we love you, we bless you, we honor you. In Christ's name, amen. 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 All right. Let's do it. Captain's going. While the captains for the coin toss make their way to the field, the rest of the Wildcats gather behind the south end zone, awaiting their time to take the field one last time. Hey, all the C is up front. Hey, Good to go. Wait, wait, no, they ain't run out yet. We're going to wait till they go. We're going to wait till they go, man. Make half. Yeah. Hey, big time players make big time plays. Yeah, I already know one thing. Leave it all out here, bro. I yeah, really. Hey, let me say it. We talk about our class. We talk about our class. We talk about our class. We're finna walk these boys. We're finna walk them boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Wildcat fans, here are your Wildcats. Hey, let's go! Let's go! Let's go, bud! With the toss of the coin going LC's way, the Wildcats will receive, and so begins yet the latest chapter of what have been some of the great battles between these two schools. For the Wildcats, their first possession not going well. Jamie Bunting's pass to Ryan Montague results in a two-yard loss. It's three and out, Wildcats forced to punt. Veterans playing a game like this is one thing, but for freshmen like punter Tim Willett, perhaps a case of some nerves. This one off the side of his foot only travels 11 yards. It gives Harden Simmons what appears to be excellent field position. But on the play, a Cowboy defender called for holding. It gives the Wildcats 10 yards on a fresh set of downs. That's when Dennis Dunn goes to his bag of tricks. The Montague to Bunting to Demario Parker play covers 63 yards and puts LC ahead 7-0. Hey, 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 oh, we've been practicing those since, since the first week of fall camp. And Coach Don wanted, he couldn't wait for the perfect time to bring him out. And today was the perfect game because by all means, we were going to give ourselves a shot to get in the playoffs. Coach been practicing the whole week, and he was like, man, we're going to run these tricks because he know it's going to be my first game back, and they're going to bite. So as I got it and threw it back, man, it was just so happy. They, they did just exactly what we wanted to do, bite on the run, and Mario was wide open. Hey, Ryan, I'm going to the ball at the ground. Oh. Yeah. Good job, Good job staying in there, baby. Good job staying in there. Yeah. The Wildcat defense gets their first chance on the field, and the swarm tackle here on Devin Carver. But Harden Simmons quarterback Logan Turner is the one the Wildcats need to focus on. Coming off a 559 yard seven touchdown game at Texas Lutheran, Turner continues to show the hot hand, burning the Wildcats for 55 yards on the pass to Carver, finally down at the LC 21. The Wildcats look like they may dodge the scoring threat with Pop Frederick defending against Corey Jones, but the ball pops out, keeping the Cowboys in business. Next play at Turner finding Garrett Shukart for the five yard score. Game tied at seven, 628 left in the first quarter. When the Wildcats get it back, they'll move the football again with Montague picking up 11 yards. A few plays later, Bunting back to pass. 
can't find anyone to throw to, so runs out of bounds near the Cowboy 25. Two plays later, more tricks from the LC offense. Kyle Gallion's pass to Skinny Sampson puts LC up again 14-7. Oh man, we've been, we threw that in this week, you know, we've been practicing it, just, uh, we've been running screens and bubbles against everybody and just, it worked out perfectly. Once, once I caught the ball and saw that they were coming to break on me, I saw Skinny wide open and it just, it couldn't have been prettier, couldn't have been prettier. It won't take Harden Simmons long to answer. On their first play after the kickoff, it's Turner for Trey Lewis, 61 yard touchdown, ties the game to 14. And if the rest of this game will be anything like the first quarter, it will be a nail biter. As the second quarter gets underway, the Wildcats facing a big decision. Fourth and one from their own 47. Let's go. What hash are we on, Ben? Let's go trips left. The decision is to go for it, but Montague runs right into the defender, Justin Emery, and Cowboys take over on down. And Turner will make LC pay for that miscalculation. The 27 yard scoring pass to Carver. But a potentially big development on the extra point when Phil Ford makes the block. Wildcats down six, 20 to 14. Let's go. How will we respond? Let's go, guys. Let's go. How are we going to can't separate, guys. Can't separate. Good team, players. We got to stay together. We're going to beat them. Back on offense, LC looking to answer. But on third and four, Samson coming up about a half yard short. So, LC facing another fourth and one decision, this time from their own 41. Coach Dunn not holding back, though, deciding to go for it again. This time, there will be no defender to bring down Montague. Untouched, he picks up 19 yards and out at the Harden Simmons 40. Let's go! Let's go! The Wildcats wind up with a fourth down at the Harden Simmons 30 and deciding to kick it. Sophomore Adon Oliveras coming through with his longest field goal of the year, 47 yards, making it a three point game, 20 to 17. Good job, baby! Now the LC defense hoping for a stop, and the man who would play maybe the game of his life, Richard Logan, on the tackle, keeping Lewis short of the first down, Harden Simmons has to punt. All right, here we go. As time starts to wind down in the half, the LC offense seems to be catching its rhythm, bunting for Cortland Bell, getting some blocking help from Sampson, and first down at the LC 45. Then it's Montague, showing how bad he wants this win. First down at the Harden Simmons 44, Brandon Phillips, the recipient of that exchange. In the first half, the Wildcats showing the ability to make the big play and doing it again here when Bunting connects with Bell. Forty-four yard touchdown, LC back in the lead, 24-20. Let's go, baby. 60 minutes, baby. Unfortunately for LC, a minute 27 remaining in the first half, and that will be more than enough time for Turner to engineer a drive. Marching his team down the field, Turner caps 75 yards in six plays in just over a minute with a touchdown to Trey Lewis, 27-24 Harden Simmons. Still time for the Wildcats to make a play, but when Bunting's throw slips through Bell's hands, Phillips is there for the interception. It gives Turner one more crack with 11 seconds from the LC 48. Fortunately for LC, the Wildcat defense won't allow that to happen. The first half coming to an end with LC trailing 27-24 and needing for sure to make some adjustments on defense. We've got, we got the ability to get back there. We just got to make sure we, we don't let them scramble. We got to get Shaq. Have confidence. Play with your swag. 
Shaq. You don't play quiet. He's, it's in his eyes. Mm -hmm. We got to get him playing. We got to get Dominique cooling down. We got to get Phil getting after the quarterback. You don't. Find your swag. Do something. Play like you got no regrets. Because tomorrow's not promised, man. It ain't promised. Monday's not promised. It ain't. You got 30 more minutes that aren't promised. That's all you got right now. So you go take it. I got faith in every one of you guys in the orange jersey right now. I got faith in every single one of you guys. It's white shirt pride, man. That's what we talked about this morning. That's what it's about, Pop. We got faith in you. All right? You good? All right. Hey, let's bounce back now, guys. We got to be able to just handle our, handle our job, get to our spots, and play fast from there, okay? You got 30 more minutes. That's it. Defense, let me tell you about that quarterback. He's a freaking transfer. He's been there one year. He don't love Harden Simmons. These are all your dreams. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. You better lay it on the line. You understand me? Yes, sir. Father God, bless our worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Turn up. Fall out, fella. Hey, Phil Ford, where's that defense? I know. Come on, get him up. It's coming, coach. As the third quarter gets underway, Harden Simmons starting first on offense, but the LC defense emerges with a new sense of purpose, not backing down for anyone. When Ford knocks down this Turner pass, the Cowboys will punt it back. There have been some moments this season when Ryan Montague looks like the most dominant player on the field. LC's first drive of the second half is one of those moments. Thirty yards on the bunting screen to Montague, LC back in the lead, 31-27. Half time, I felt that we was a little sluggish, but we wasn't executing. In the second half, it was just I had to find a way to feel I had to spark the team. Uh, just one of us, you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad I did that, and we just started rolling. At halftime, Ford challenged the LC defensive backs to get their swagger back. And for senior cornerback Reggie Calhoun, it comes here. I was just playing for the team, man. I I felt it. I felt it all week. I felt I felt a change. You know, I I think I just because I've been you know praying a lot more and just relaxing a lot more than letting the game come to me instead of trying to make the play. I let it come to me. You know, my dad talked to me a lot about just relaxing. I put a lot of stress on myself, you know, but I play relaxed today. And Reggie did make some big plays. Like we said, we we got this we got this rule that we forget about where we mess up. Because we can't just focus on when we mess up because we're going to keep messing up. And he found, he, found his, he found his mojo and he came through. Speaking of swagger, no one's showing it more than the combination of Bunting and Parker. Their latest connection for 38 yards has LC at the Harden-Simmons 2. A chance for the Wildcats to go up by 11, but the only moment of the game where the offense hurts itself, Big Wayne Harris called for a false start. After the penalty, Montague, with one of his rare fumbles on the season, recovered by Chad Laughlin, who tries to return it but meets a linebacker in a quarterback's body. The Wildcats have seen some dramatic momentum changes off their own mistakes in 2012, hoping this isn't another one of those. But when Turner connects with Lewis for 27 yards, the Cowboys are on the move. Later, facing a fourth and one at the LC 43, Harden Simmons going for it. Turner escapes the pursuit by Ford, finds Shukart for 20 yards to the LC 23. Three plays later, it's Turner for Corey Jones, 22-yard touchdown completing the momentum swing. Instead of being up 11, LC goes down three, 34-31, and again the pressure falls on Bunting and the LC offense.
Before the game, there was something that Dominique Graham had said to Demario Parker about big time players making big time plays. And in this big time, Demario Parker does exactly that. 64 yards for Parker to the Harden Simmons 14. This time, the Cats won't waste the opportunity. On third and one, Bunting finding Galleon. He does the rest. Touchdown and extra point, putting LC back in front, 38-34. But Harden Simmons has its own big time player and Turner responding to the LC score, 43 yard pass to Colton Brewer aided by a collision of LC safeties. And as the third quarter comes to an end, the Wildcats doing their best to hang on to the lead, setting up what will be a memorable fourth quarter. But the Wildcats getting tough here, and Richard Logan, who'd finished with 13 tackles, taking down Carver for a three-yard loss. On second down, Turner under pressure by Jared Maya tries to get rid of it, nearly picked off by Reggie Calhoun. That sets up third and goal, but Logan is there to knock it away again. This time, the Cowboys do kick the field goal, and trail by one, 38-37. Boys, 37. The LC offense knows a touchdown could meet an eight point lead, but when Bunting is sacked here by Undra Hendricks, LC has to give the ball back. Earlier in the game, the freshman punter was struggling. Not anymore. Tim Willett's 47 yard punt down at the eight yard line. And that field position will be a factor on Harden Simmons' next drive. Throwing from his own end zone, Turner has his pass batted away at the last second by Calhoun. Then on the next pass, disaster for the Cowboys. The ball off Eugene Jackson's helmet into the arms of senior linebacker Nate Janzen. He's not giving that football up anytime soon. Wildcats waste no time taking advantage. From the 16, it's Montague finding the seam, delivering the stiff arm, and scoring the touchdown. LC takes an eight point edge, 48 37, with 9.08 left in the ballgame. That time will feel like an eternity for LC as Turner goes back to work. But the Wildcats now relentless in their defensive intensity. On this play, Calhoun with a deflection, and Shaq Lewis the hit. But Turner not one to lose composure, and his Cowboys on the move, hitting Colton Brewer for 20 yards down to the Louisiana College 23. Three plays later, Turner finding Jesse Ramos 15 yards to the three yard line, first and goal. The Wildcats need to come up with a goal line stand. First down, Carver with the carry, but Dominic Graham there to make the tackle for no gain. Carver. Second and goal from the three, Turner to the air this time, in the corner for Lewis. With Ira Jewett covering, Lewis called for the offensive pass interference. That moves it back to the 18. The LC secondary will successfully defend the next two pass plays into the left side of the end zone. It leaves Harden Simmons with fourth and goal at the 18 with four minutes left to go. The Cats get aggressive. Graham on the blitz. Turner's pass falling harmlessly to the ground. LC takes over with a chance to run out the clock. Thing the Wildcats will look to avoid is a turnover, almost with one here when the snap to Bunting catches him off guard. Rather than risking a sloppy handoff, Bunting keeps it for a two yard loss. For the LC offense, not much accomplished on this drive other than running a minute and a half off the clock. The three and out gives Harden Simmons the ball with a chance for a final drive with 2.18 left to go. We weren't nervous at all. We know we behind our defense 100%, and we know that what was on the line, so we know that. They was going to get a stop. I'm sitting there thinking, um, 
they're not going to score, but who's going to get this interception? That's all I was thinking. Who am I going to be able to celebrate with when they get this interception? And um, I just knew they weren't going to score on our defense. We well, always said, this is what we do. Because we don't like sitting on the sideline. We like to be on the field. This is what we do. We do this. We a defense with the white shirts. This is what we do. That's the only thing. We, we always say that. That's the only thing we say. No mystery about how Harden Simmons will play it. Turner to Ramos, 22 yards to the LC 41. Then it's Turner to Jimmy Simpson, eight yards to the 34. Logan making the tackle. Turner for Colton Brewer, but Logan is there to break it up. Harden Simmons with a fourth and three with 35 seconds left. But Turner comes up with a clutch throw, six yards to Brewer. First down at the LC 28, time for three, maybe four plays. First down, Turner rolls out, fires to the end zone. Shaq Lewis is almost there to pick it off. He can't hold his head down, you know, so I just kept him up, kept him, you know, coaching him up on how to work different techniques in order to be successful, and he made the plays, he made the adjustments, and he did what he had to do. There you go, Shaq! Second down, Turner down the middle for Ramos, but Lewis there once again, breaking it up. It's third down, and Turner looking for Trey Lewis. Reggie Calhoun gets his hand on it, and again, Shaq Lewis nearly makes the interception. But with that, it's fourth down, and just 5.6 seconds left in the game. You're at, you're at the real position, you're on the weak side, and you're underneath everything. Get, get over the top, okay? Game time, baby. And the dreams of a season come down to one final moment. Yes, Lord. Lord, not a one of us did anything here except that you breathe life into our bodies. That's it. Thank and you, strength Father. into our legs and arms. Thank you, Father. And wisdom into our heads. Thank you, Lord. Lord. we don't even want a victory unless you gave it to That's us. That's it, God. Lord, we give it back because it'd be worthless. So, Lord, take this little remnant Thank that you, you've made into the greatest team this school has ever known. Lord, take this little remnant, bring us into the playoffs, and let us keep showing Everybody. Thank you, Lord. Louisiana Wildcats belong to Jesus Christ. Thank In your you, name Jesus. we pray. Amen. Amen. Everything come down to a want to. It come down to character. Character is what are you gonna do when times get hard? You know what I mean? And when a hard time hit us, we act like it never happened. And our backs are got, got against the wall, we fall we fought to the end. 60 minute game, we knew what it was gonna be and sure enough, it went down to the last ticks. It's really <laughs> hard to say, it's, it's emotional for us all. Uh, just, you know, happy to make history, you know, leave our legacy. I mean, it's not done yet. We still still got five more weeks to leave it. So, well, breaking history, that was, that was a, a good milestone for us and we're happy to do that. But it's a totally different feeling. But we gotta humble ourselves and move on and play next week because this game is over with. The 24-hour rule is still in, intact. You know, we're going to enjoy this win tonight. Tomorrow we go back to work, and 
we'll watch and find out where we're going to play at. True to their word, 24 hours later, the Wildcats have moved past the Harden-Simmons win and now gather to find out whether they will be one of only 32 teams from across America chosen to play in the Division III playoffs. Though they're fairly certain they will get in, the Wildcats have been hearing they'll possibly play their first round game in California. But as the selection show gets underway, the team that's been talked about as a possible first round opponent, Cal Lutheran, does not draw LC. In fact, in the first 16 teams that are announced, the Wildcats are not among them. My heart was about to pound out of my chest. But as the second half of the bracket is announced, first one familiar team is announced. And then the one LC has been waiting for. Despite getting a second shot at Mary Harden Baylor, the Louisiana College Wildcats could not change the first result. Their playoff trip to Belton, Texas would result in a 59-20 loss. The Crews' Ladero Bailey led his team to six first-half scores from which the Wildcats could not recover. Jamie Bunting would throw for 310 yards but was intercepted four times. Ryan Montague closed his 1,000-yard season with 120 more yards and the stiff arm of the year on the Crews' All-American linebacker, Javis Jones. But in the end, the game revealed where Louisiana College still has more work to do, both as a football program and in its overall athletic facilities. As disappointment hit on an otherwise glorious Texas Saturday afternoon, also the reality that for these Wildcat seniors, this would also mean goodbye.
The 2012 LC Wildcats did something the program had never done since coming back in 2000, reached the postseason. They did so with a modern era best record of 8-2. In the days after the season ended, some 20 Wildcats were named to various levels of postseason honors. Dennis Dunn was named Co-Coach of the Year for the American Southwest Conference, and Mario Parker named a second-team All-American. But the story of the Wildcats can't be told in statistics, records, or accolades. It has to be told from where it meant the most, in the hearts of the LC players and coaches, a team that learned that winning today means loving each day and the opportunities that come with that. All my main thoughts are going to be all positive, you know, uh, like I said, you know, this place right here, it's a, it's a special place, you know, the school, everybody here is just wonderful, you know, everybody, people are wonderful, you know, and uh, I find it as a blessing, you know, being a part of something like this, and I always look back on it as that, you know. Just to be remembered is going to mean a lot to me. You know what I'm saying? People died every day. You, you can forget people. There's people that played in the program that people that, that forgot in the past time. But if you can remember me 10 to 15 years from now, that means I did my job to leave my, a legacy. <laughs> I tell you what, I will say this here. My name don't remember. You don't know that I was on the first 80 win team <laughs> and the first team to take LC to the playoff. Oh, man. Legacy. The legacy we left, the teammates, the coaching, the parents, the, the fans. I, it's so much to remember, I can't even say, but the brotherhood is just crazy. I, I won't forget Louisiana College, I can tell you that. Every home game, I'll be here for sure. <laughs> but it's just so much to just re reflect on. Opportunity. That word. It takes on a whole different different meaning when I think, think about it because coming from nothing and then making something out of, out of nothing, the opportunity began once I stepped on Louisiana College campus in Pine Louisiana on August 14, 2009. You know, it, it changed. You know, and I'm appreciative for everything because that opportunity is leading me to where I'm at now, being a father, husband, and hopefully a professional football player, wherever that may be. But opportunity is, is the word that I will associate with Louisiana College. I think I think the program, if you come here, you think you're coming to play football. You know, you think you're just going to play football and that's going to be it. But the coaches sow a lot into you. And they teach you how to be a man, not only on the field, but off the field. Take care of your business off the field and it'll carry over, you know. So I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, you, you think you're a man coming out of high school, but these, these coaches show you, you know, how to, how to better yourself in every situation. I, mean, I really enjoyed the, the past four years playing for, for the coaches we got. It, it's unlike any place, you know. We got a special thing here, and that, that's why I really like it. You're wondering, you're sitting there thinking like, man, I, this, is, this isn't what I signed up for. But, I mean, you stay all four years. I mean, you find out who you are. You find out, you know, the men that are, that are, that are coaches here. I mean, they're, we all have great dads, no doubt. But... When, you, when you're here, and because you're, you're away from your parents so much, because you play football and you're with them so much, it's a their fathers away from our fathers. They they treat you like they're your kids, and they treat you how a how a young young man should be treated. And it's not they don't baby us. They don't they don't you know they don't like okay well here you did wrong, but I mean they're gonna jump on you like your dad should you know. And and that's one of the things that I've learned is as you find out who you are, you you, you get put through so much stuff, and you you get. Sometimes you get beaten to the point of, of pure exhaustion and, and just quitting. You just want to quit. And then for some reason, they just come talk to you and you're like, man, I want to play for this guy. I want, I want to do this for him. All the coaches here, they, they do a great job um, at like just pulling you in and just saying, hey, you know what? You're here to play football, but you're also here to be a man and understand what life's about. And, uh, you know, you got to appreciate that from a coach. I mean, because it's not LSU, you know, we're not at Alabama or LSU or Florida where they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, and, you know, they don't really care if you go to class or not. I'm like, no, you're going to class, you're going to get a degree here. Uh, just the, the pride that we have, that we have to, as a team, you know, uh, to be the first 
team to go eight and two. Uh, I take a lot of pride in that. It's over now. That's your college career. And you know, when you look back at stuff like that, you just gotta make sure uh, that you gave 100% throughout your time here because uh, really whenever it's all said and done and it's really up to God when, whenever your time is over with, uh, it's whether you gave 100% or not, that, uh, whether you regret your time or not, you know. It's a, did you buy in? Uh, did you give it all on the field? You know, did you play your last play the way you wanted to be played? You know, what was your legacy basically? Remember, you know, my brothers, you know, I'm gonna remember how, it's like a brotherhood around here. Like, we all just, I'm remember, like, it's just, you know, I can, I feel like I'm gonna be able to call anybody from here, even on the office side. It's not a white shirt thing. I feel like I got people, if I just need to call somebody, just need some, I just feel like I'm gonna, I got them. I don't feel like somebody always got my back. You know what I'm saying? Um, just the brother aspect of everything, just everybody loving on each other, just always picking each other up. And just knowing, you know, at sometimes it's gonna be peaks and valleys of you know relationships and stuff like that. The same at the end of the day, you can always go to that person and be like, you know, they can help you out with something. And just, um, just dwell on the moment that you're at together. But yeah, we gonna keep pushing them, and I'm pretty sure guys will come back and tell them to do better than what we did. And one day this program will win a national championship. I play football. Um, Obviously, I, you know, people ask me how, how was my degree and my, you know, school, and I'll tell them school was great. I enjoyed it, but, you know, the main thing that I always, always will remember and carry with me was, you know, the football experience and the brotherhood and, you know, the bonds that I made far as here. But whenever people ask me, you know, what, you know, what, what were you in college? I, you know, I'll just I'll tell them a white shirt and walk in a white shirt. So, definitely football. Football was number one. Mostly white shirt pride. I mean. We grind on that all the time, and like it's just a prideful thing to have. Like you don't understand it until you actually go through all the turmoil and get to finish as a senior, and you're done, and then you, you can't explain it. You just got to finish it out and know what it's about. LC's definitely given me the lifelong lessons of coming in a boy, leaving a man, in the sense of knowing what I'm going to do with my life after this, knowing um, how to get set up, keeping a good head on my shoulders, learning how to be a leader in the community, learning how to be a positive influence, working as hard as you possibly can, work ethic. I mean, all of those things play in from learning that here at LC through the coaching staff. I mean, they've given us a lot of lifelong lessons that we can take home or, or take home with us um, and keep forever. Oh, man, it's just one thing. And it revolves around Coach Magic. Just be accountable, hold people accountable that you love, and keep God first in your life. Just buying the program, you know, and listen to your coaches, you know, they, they won't lead you wrong. Just basically buy in and just do what you gotta do. Nothing was diminished um, in what really took place in 2012. Um, you know, a lot of firsts. Um, obviously, the eight-win season and the first playoff uh, in school history uh, will forever be remembered. Um, but more than that, the, the lives that were really changed forever in 2012. That the you know the headlines never really uh, will discuss and never will be in in uh, uh, in print and in, in any newspaper, but, but I do believe that they were, a lot of the, the stories were, were told in heaven's headlines and, and uh, that a lot of eternal things happened in the 2012 season that, that really I'll reflect upon and it'll be the, the thing that um, probably as a, as a papa made, you know, if I, if, you, if I can use that term of Papa of this thing probably makes me the most proud that these boys really uh, were able to see the deeper things uh, about Louisiana College football and, and family that we became and that we are and will continue to be. You know, those guys, seniors, will, will, will forever be, you know, Louisiana College football family. What I'm most proud about about the program and what I did is that we did it for free. 
the hard work, it was all voluntary. You know, we weren't no scholarship guys. You know, we weren't getting a free ride. We weren't getting a nice dorm, a, a, you know, a, a Jerry Lane SUV or whatever the case. You know, we, we, we done this because we wanted to. We set out a goal and we were going to accomplish it, you know, whatever, at whatever cost. And, you know, in 20 years, that's going to be something I'm going to be proud of. You know, deep down inside, you know, I didn't get to play the big program, you know. But, you know, I did something that no other, you know, level does. We, we played for free. We did it because we wanted to, you know, not because we had to. You know, it was all voluntary 100%, and that's just something that, you know, you could take away and hold, you know, high on your uh, shelf of accomplishments is just being a four-year player for a Division three school that, you know, was completely voluntary. In a way, it was a good thing, man. It was a good thing, because when I was in Florida, man, I was just out there wild, and man. It wasn't, I wasn't doing nothing right. You know, like, I, was, I just came out of high school, you know, I mean, I'm from Florida, man, Jackson. Man. It's like I would have wanted to stay and did four years in Florida, of course, you know. But being here is just, it's not a bad thing that I'm here. Like, everything I'm doing here, I'm finna get a degree. So it's like, good, good. <laughs> it kind of like, burn something in my heart. Like, I mean, I don't know what it is. I mean, going through like white shirt pride, yeah, sure, that's gonna, that's gonna stick around for a while. I got that white cloth, you know, but it's just a mentality, like, they burn a mentality into you, like, to be a winner, to, to win today, and, you know, to, to be successful. We did what no, no team ever done before, and so at the end of the day, we left it better than we found it, but we didn't leave the way we wanted to leave. But that's just leaving the legacy and letting the younger guys know that. Now you see what we messed up at. Now you raised the ball. You see what you see what we we our flaws is at. Now you do better than we did. And so that's how I look at it. That we leaving we leaving something for the young guys to 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 know what to do and what not to do so they can su succeed better than we did. So at the end, that's all that matters. I won 73 twice since I've been here, and I feel like each of those years, we were a much better football team than the previous 73 team. Right? And the, the, the bar just keep going up and up. And I'd be surprised to not see them make the playoffs next year. That shouldn't even be a question of whether they're gonna make the playoffs because it's like we're we kicking down each door on the way and pretty soon the school is going to win that championship regardless of the facilities, regardless of the people that follow us or bandwagon, none of that. We're going to win that championship at LC. We can't see the benefits of it now, but we will when, when LC is holding up a national championship and we'll be able to be like, he was waiting for that very exact moment. Maybe as a program, I'm telling you guys trying to do something. It's something that we're missing right now. You know what I mean? And it's something that as a program, we're gonna have to, coaches, the future players are gonna still have to dig and grind it out. Who knows what it may be, but when we get to where we can, I guess, magnify his name on a national level, a real national level, like ESPN type level, because I guarantee you, like whoever wins this championship this year will probably not. God will probably not be the first thing out their mouth, but I guarantee you when LC gets there, that's who the glory will go to. So the whole world can see it, not just a state or a city. But he's trying to, we're gonna impact this whole nation, for real. And I know it and I believe it. And I just know that's what's gonna happen when LC holds up that trophy.